What is up my friends? So today's video is going to be all about intermittent fasting and me sharing some of my experiences. So for the last few years I've been doing a strategy that's called 16 slash 8 for more or less every single day and 16 slash 8 is basically a fasting and eating pattern. So it means that I'm fasting for 16 hours and I'm having an 8 hour feeding window. So what that would look like on my day to day is that I'm usually having my first meal at 12 o'clock and then I have my second meal around 7 to 8 in the evening and uh, usually having two meals per day so the first one at lunch and uh, the second one in the evening a couple of hours before I go to sleep and uh, that is something that has been incredible for me personally for many different reasons and uh, one thing I really like the efficiency behind it and uh, the fact that I don't have to worry about breakfast in the morning so I can be productive and get my most important tasks done even before I worry about food and that is something that's extremely liberating for me and I feel the most mentally sharp and being able to perform in the morning and this was a game changer for me when I was losing weight for the first time because what this eating pattern eating pattern did was that I was no longer hungry in the morning and it was easier to stick to my calorie deficit because before that I was always eating breakfast and um, after I had breakfast I would always feel hungry before lunch and then would have a pretty small meal and I wouldn't really feel satisfied and then I would be hungry until my meal in the evening and I wouldn't like feel super satisfied after the meals so once I got into this eating pattern was that I could have these larger meals which actually made me feel full and uh, like I said it took me a couple of days to adjust to that eating pattern but once I did I was no longer hungry in the morning so that's pretty awesome and uh, this has actually been shown to improve our muscle mass interestingly enough sounds pretty counterintuitive but uh, there, there has only been studies in mice so far so this does not necessarily have to apply for humans but it definitely could and that is that this fasting would actually slightly increase our muscle mass and reduce our fat mass but that is not something that has been confirmed in humans yet so hopefully we'll know more about that in the future and the second thing I want to dive into is doing slightly longer fasts so I've been doing a couple of uh, 36 hour fast. I'm currently doing my second 60 hour fast. So a 60 hour fast is basically, I had my last meal at evening yesterday, which was Tuesday. So today is Wednesday. I won't be eating anything today. I won't be eating anything on Thursday. And then I will either break my fast on Friday morning or at, um, at lunch on Friday so that would be somewhere between 60 to 65 hours and um, there has been some incredible health benefits to this and um, it's pretty interesting because when we're fasting for longer than uh, 18 to 22 hours it's somewhere in that range where a process called autophagy starts and what's so powerful about autophagy is that when our body doesn't have available energy from uh, our stores so our that could be our glycogen stores or our fat stores but uh, this process basically kicks in about 18 to 22 hours after we have been fasting and uh, what this does is basically that the body is going to, going to use weak or damaged cells as fuels and what's so powerful about this is that if we have cells in our body that could potentially develop into different kinds of disease, our body is going to destroy those and use them as fuel instead. So it basically comes down to survival of the fittest in our genes and uh, that's something that's very interesting and um, a lot of people have been uh, recommending, especially when you get a little bit older, to do one of these longer fasts each year simply because that can uh, hinder or even uh, negate Alzheimer's disease and similar from happening at all so if you can fast for 
if you can go f- without food for three days and uh, avoid some of those pretty damn harming disease, that would be incredible, obviously. And um, this is also going to be great because we're going a couple of days without eating any calories. And if you're trying to lose weight, that can be a great thing, but... It can also be a pretty damaging thing because this is pretty important when it comes to our psychology. So if you're a person that can justify fasting for, or let's say that you're fasting for 36 hours. So you go, you stop eating at the evening, you go the entire next day without food and then you break your fast at uh, lunch or having breakfast in the morning. That's basically going to imply that you didn't have any calories for an entire day. And for most people, that's going to mean that you created a caloric deficit of over 2000 calories. And some people can justify eating (laughs) that amount of calories the next day combined with what they would eat regularly. And that's when it gets tricky and very dangerous because if you're that type of person, fasting could actually be harming for your weight loss and uh, your rich relationship with food rather than being beneficial so it really comes down to knowing yourself and how your psychology works so if you're a person that's looking to lose weight fasting could definitely be a viable option but i don't often or i rarely prescribe it for any of my clients it's usually if i'm working with a person that's already used to fasting because i don't feel like pushing fasting on anyone because um I think it's something that if you feel like fasting, then go ahead. There's lots of health benefits to it, but you don't have to do it at all if you don't want to. And uh, like I said, for some people, it can actually be damaging to their calories and relationship with food. So that's something to take into consideration. But when it comes to the aspect of preventing the seals disease and healing our gut, fasting can be extremely powerful tool and something that I've been using and I likely will be using it for the rest of my life. So that's my experience with fasting and some of the knowledge that I have found from people. M- most of my knowledge come from Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She's a scientist that has a extremely good knowledge on fasting and uh, saunas as well. So if either of those topics are something that you are interested in, I would highly recommend checking out her content and let me know if you have any questions. Take care.